Hello guys and welcome back to a new video. This time, we're going to talk about interior lights in architecture scenes. This first part will cover the daylight basics and give you some tips to achieve good results. So enjoy. So, I have for you here two interior scenes. The first one is small as you see, 4 by 5 meters and with a height of 2.7. Now, from the camera view inside the room, and while on Cycle's render engine, if we switch to render mode, you can notice a little bit of a light coming inside. This is the world light which covers the entire scene in Blender. To control it, we can go here to the world light settings, and manage it with both the color and the strength values. Let us slide the color toward white. And make the strength on 2, and you can already see the difference. Still you can't be satisfied with this plain light, so the key here is to add a sun. What I often do is slide the color a bit toward blue, to mimic the sky color, and we will leave it on the same strength value for now, then, from top view, and depending where your camera is, we can add a sunlight to the scene. Try to direct it toward the area needed with basic movement and rotation. Here in this light icon, you can find the sun parameters, change the color value to affect the sun rays color, the strength to boost the light and the angel value to control the sharpness between the light and shadows. So before changing it, let us see what we have. As you see it already adds some life to the scene. We can now make the color a bit warm like a normal sun color, and up the power to about 3. The power value depend on how big of a scene you working on, and how far you placed the sun, and as we said before, we can experiment with the angel value to smooth the light edges. Sunlight in real life won't be that sharp, so smoothing it would boost the realism in your scene. I think 1.5 is fine with this space. If we render it now with the basic render settings, we can see the result. Here it is, now beside those black corners which are the result of low render samples, the scene still not lit as in real life, and I get this question a lot on my interior tutorials. Someone would ask me why I boost the lights inside while it's a day scene. I do that for two reasons. First one is to show the clients how the lights look while they're on, whether they are spots or hidden lights. But the main reason is the light bounces. You see in real life light bounce a lot. That's why in any normal day your room would be lit during the day even if the lights off. However, in 3D softwares like Blender, there is a limit. Go over it and your machine would suffer. So, here in the render settings, you can find under the light paths something called max bounces, contains a variety of values. What makes a difference in this scene is the diffuse only, which is the color. If we increase this value here, say like to something around 12, you can immediately see an enhancement in the room lights. Let us render it and compare with the previous render. Here is the render with 12 diffuse bounces and if we put them beside one another you can see the difference, keep in mind those extra bounces came at a cost of extra render minutes. Now, after we finished with this room, let's go to a bigger space like this one, I will turn off the sun and make the world light back on default and switch to render view to see what we have. As you see, it is the same as before but, with this bigger space, using only sky color won't be enough, in this case, I always recommend using a high dynamic range image, or as we normally call it an HDRI sky image, to do that, let us open a new work window like this one by dragging the corner, then switch it to shades editor, and make it here on world shading, those nodes have the same settings as the ones on the right so if we would change on one of them they both changed, now, to add an HDRI image we need a node called environment texture, 
hit Ctrl A to add it, then open it, I will select this one image that I have on my machine, a simple search online for free HDRI images and you can find many, connect those two nodes according to color as shown, yellow to yellow, and switch to render view to see what we have, as you see it makes a huge difference in lighting inside, so now, if we need to change the light direction on the HDRI and make it come from the left corner, what we can do is add a mapping node before the environment texture, so go outside, and see where the sun in the HDRI sky, then, go to add on settings and turn on node wrangler. After that, select the environment texture and hit Ctrl T to add both the mapping and the coordinate nodes, here in the rotation. We can experiment with the Z rotation to fix the light rays direction. And here it is, I did also manage the attitude of the horizon, so that it matches the view from inside the room. The walls have a bit more noise than the one before due to the bigger space and having a glass material in the windows. Now, from my experimenting, increasing the diffuse bounce is over 12 while the total still under that won't change anything, so what I would do is make the diffuse 14 in bounces, I also made the transparency bounces on 18 for the glass material, and change the total to match the bigger number. And here are the render before and after we edit the max bounces in this room. Now quick tip before we wrap this video, if we used another HDRI map, say like this one, you might need to add a sun to fix the lights inside, but I won't recommend that, experiment with the HDRI and try many until you find the one which suits your scene, and with time you will have some preferred ones that can be used on multiple projects.